Okay, we're going to use GPT-01 Preview to create an entire development plan for our app in about 25 seconds. Seriously, like that's how long it takes to generate the dev plan. I've done this a few times. GPT-01 Preview is absolutely insane, and it's freaking awesome, and you should totally be doing this. This video is going to be a deep dive on the dev plan portion on a much from a much longer video, which you can see right here in its entirety if you want the entire context. Go check that out first or second or whatever, you know, floats your boat. Okay, our goal is to create an entire development plan for building this simple but non-trivial application that has a front end, a back end, and an integration out to a third party OpenAI. The app is a debate generator, as you can see, and let's see what Thomas Jefferson and Mahatma Gandhi would debate about the meaning of life. So right now it's sending all that data over to OpenAI. Thomas Jefferson has the first argument and the LLM is returning arguments for each of the personas in real time. And we get to watch them debate. And by the end of this debate, which is a total of eight arguments, which I defined here in this input, we're going to get a little download button that lets us take that debate right here and save it either as JSON or Markdown. Pretty cool little app, pretty fun. The way I built this app is I generated a development plan using GPT-01 Preview. As you can see, it thought for 25 seconds to generate the plan. And the development plan spat out individual scopes of work that each contained user stories, design specs, and technical specs with fairly detailed instructions in terms of what needs to be developed. I then took those specs and pasted them into Cursor's Composer feature like so. And Cursor then read the instructions and generated code each step along the way. As you can see, Cursor is thinking through the instructions and it's generating some code right now for app.js. It then spits out a diff, which you can see behind the composer feature here that I then reviewed and either accepted or rejected the code changes. To get an output like this from GPT-01 Preview, you have to be fairly detailed in your prompting. And that's what I'm gonna talk about next. So let's talk about an outline for our prompt. We want to start with a high level goal for the prompt. We want to give the LLM some context in terms of what we're doing and what we're hoping to achieve and what we want the LLM to do for us. That tees the whole thing up. Next, we want to define the stack, the technology stack. Tell it what back end you're using, tell it what front end you're using, tell it what libraries and utilities you're using, what third parties you're integrating with. Just narrow down the realm of technical possibilities. Give it some focus. This is going to help it be a lot more successful because if you don't define the stack, then it's just going to pick one for you. It might even be the wrong stack, or it might be a stack that you're not familiar with or that you don't prefer. So just do the upfront work of deciding what you want your stack to be. By the way, you can use LLMs to help define that. But make sure you have that defined before you go to O1 Preview to generate your dev plan. Next, you want to explain what's already been done. You don't want O1 Preview to be creating scopes of work for things that have already been done. What I recommend, and you can see it in that video I mentioned in the beginning, is going ahead and setting up your development environment. Get a basic back end and front end working, and then let the O1 Preview model know that you've done that. That way it can step over all of those initial setup steps, and it knows that you have a basic front end and back end functioning, and it can get right to describing the actual functionality of the app. The next section of your prompt is you want to describe the app. You want to give it a name and, and describe the purpose of your application so it knows. You want to describe the UX of your application. Be as detailed as you can or want to in these sections. This is where a lot of the value comes from and where you really help the LLM create a valuable output. Uh, you also want to describe the technical architecture if you're comfortable doing that. By the way, if you're not comfortable doing that, use LLMs to help define the technical architecture before you get to this step. 
just have a conversation with 4-0 um, and uh, or Claude and, and ask it questions around how one might architect the application you want to build. Then you can start to compare and contrast some options, look terms up, get an understanding, form a point of view, have an opinion, and describe to O1 Preview generally what you think the technical architecture should look like. You'll see in my example, it's not super detailed. It shouldn't be super intimidating. Basically, I'm just saying that it, want, it needs to send data over to OpenAI and how that data gets sent back and in what orders. Next, number five, this is super important. You want to describe the desired output. That is how I get a response like this, where there's a user story, there's a design spec, and there's a technical spec in each individual scope of work. That should look familiar to anyone who's in software development or on a product team or generally working in tech. This is terminology and mental models that are very common in the industry. And if we can get O1 Preview to output ideas that are very common in the industry, then cursor downstream is going to be much more successful. The last thing you want to do in your prompt is provide a file structure. You want to give O1 Preview some context in terms of what files already exist and where are they. That way, when it's giving instructions like this, files to modify, client source, app.js, render the chat interface, that's how it knows which file to suggest modifying is because I gave it the file uh, structure in my prompt. Okay, so now let's look through the actual prompt that I used to generate that output. Here's where I'm teeing up the general context for O1 Preview. I want you to create a development plan for me. I'm using Cursor, the AI-powered IDE, and I will use the dev plan to prompt Cursor to create an app for me. Okay, now O1 Preview generally knows what I'm trying to accomplish. Here's my tech stack. I'm setting some constraints and I'm guiding it. I could actually extend this. There's a couple libraries I didn't include, cores comes to mind, um, that I could have added to this list. And as I continue to refine this process, this list will probably get a little bit longer, but I'm just telling it, hey, I'm using React and Material and Express, Node, Axios, .env, and OpenAI's API. Pretty basic things. I'm just telling it what, what tools I'm using. Here's what I've already done in my setup. Simple. Dev environment is set up with a basic front end and, uh, and server. And here's where I'm getting into the application description, um, this whole section here. So at the top, I'm giving my app a title so it knows it's called Debate GPT. Here's the purpose of the application. And now I'm describing the UX, right? There will be four inputs, debate topic, persona A, persona B, and argument count. Argument count defines how many arguments each persona makes in the debate. For example, if argument count is five, then each persona makes five arguments totaling to 10 for the debate. The user inputs necessary data, clicks the generate debate button. From there, the debate begins to display in a chat style layout on the screen. When the debate is done, done generating, the user can download the debate in either JSON or Markdown. Is that not what we saw in the demo at the beginning of this video? It did an excellent job taking this description and creating scopes of work that accomplished the UX I described. Next, this is me describing roughly the application architecture and kind of how the integration with OpenAI should work. How the debate gets generated is how I titled this section. When the user submits the form, pass the debate topic, persona A, and meta prompt over to OpenAI so it can generate the first argument. Immediately display the first argument in the UI for the user to see. Meanwhile, take the full context of the debate so far, the debate topic and persona B, and send that over to OpenAI so it can generate the next argument. Repeat this process until the argument count is hit. Then stop generating the arguments and display the download button. So I got to be honest here. I'm a little bit um, mixing UX description with technical architecture description here. Um, I see that as I'm reading it now. I think if I were to revise this in the future, I might, I might take some of the UX details, pop them up here just to make it more clean, and then really focus this paragraph more so on the integration with OpenAI and the architecture piece. Moving on, this section I'm describing what I want my output to look like, uh, what I want O1 Preview to actually do. 
I think this paragraph is super important and I want to hear how other people might improve on it. Let me read it for you. For the project plan, I want you to think like a product team, dev lead, designer, product manager, slice the work into small focused scopes that can be reliably achieved, but don't make them so small that there are many more tasks than necessary. You want to balance the number of tasks you generate with the quality and reliability of achieving those tasks. This is basic good practices for approaching how to split work up into small tickets so that a development team can take that work and build it out reliably and be successful. I'm basically telling O1 Preview to work like a normal product development team. And I'm not even being that detailed. Um, and I think this is what really helped create these individual scopes of work that were fairly atomic, but also not so atomic that I had 30 of them. I think there's a total of nine in this output, so not so crazy. For the project plan, be sure to include four things for each scope of work. I want a user story describing user goals. I want a design spec describing UX and app behavior. I want a technical spec describing in natural language what should be coded and in which files. So I said describing in natural language because I don't need O1 Preview to write the code for me. I'm going to use Cursor for that, right? Cursor actually has a lot more context on my code repository. So I think that Cursor in, is in a better position to be writing the actual code than O1 Preview is. So what I want O1 Preview to do is describe which files need to be edited and roughly what should happen in those files. Uh, that's where you see examples like this. Modify this file, render the chat interface. It's in natural language. It's not too complicated. Cursor understands that and can make it happen. Last thing I'm asking for is acceptance criteria. What the achieved scope of work should do and how a QA engineer can verify it's working properly. Uh, this is helpful for me because as I'm incrementally going through each scope of work, handing it over to Cursor, I want to test it afterwards. And I just want some quick instructions in terms of how O1 Preview thinks I should test it to verify it's working properly. Last thing in the prompt, here's the directory path for my current app so that you know which files I have and where they're located. And here's that output. If you don't know how to generate something like this, let me show you a little shortcut. You can take a screenshot of your directory over here, like so, and then you can pop that over in uh, 4.0. Let me open up a new chat make a file directory structure from this image. Paste that in, go ahead and hit enter, and it will actually be able to analyze this and just pop out a uh, directory tree for you. Pretty handy, copy the code, put it in your prompt, bada boom, bada bing, you are done, my friend. Hope this is useful or at the very least interesting. Like I said, go watch that long video so you have more context. And I gotta say, I'm just getting started using this approach to building applications. I think there's a lot of room for improvement here. I've already identified a couple things as I was going through this video that I might change. What would you do differently? Let me know in the comments. Let's work on this together. And I think as a group, we can figure out how to build apps really, really fast, really, really easily and make it fun. I'm Andrew. Thanks for hanging out. Peace.